Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over some very simple problems using simple machines. It's pulleys, obviously, and we're going to talk about input force, input distance, output force, output distance, and mechanical advantage. And we have four problems we're going to work on. For each problem, we have the pulleys, we have the output force. This is the object we're trying to raise. The purple thing is the string you pull on. And in each case, you're given the output force and the output distance, and you're supposed to get the mechanical advantage, the input force, and the input distance. And my hope is that when we go through these four problems, you will see the pattern that develops, how the pulleys work. And if you see the pattern, that will help you get the answers, of course. But you'll understand better how they work and the equations and things like that. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Now, we're just going to go through each problem right down the line here. We want to get the mechanical advantage for this first pulley system. We said in class, and you've seen in the previous video, that in order to get the mechanical advantage, just count the number of strings right across. And you can see one, two strings, mechanical advantage, two. That's all there is to it, count the strings. Now the object has a weight of 100 newtons. How much force do we have to apply to this string? That's the input force. The output force is the weight. That's the weight of this object. The input force is the force we apply to the string when we put the spring scale on there or when we pull that string. Now there's two strings, right? Two strings here that are supporting this weight. This string and this string. The string. That means the force is divided across those two strings. So in order to get the input force, we take the output force and we divide it by the mechanical advantage. Okay? Maybe you want to write that down. The input force is the output force divided by the mechanical advantage. Because the weight is distributed across those two strings. 50 newtons on each string, 50 times two is 100. Now, we wanna raise the object two meters. That's the output distance. The output distance is the distance we wanna raise this object. How far do we have to pull this string? Well, really, we have two strings. I mean, it's just one string that wraps around, but you can think of it as two strings. That means we have to pull twice as far because there's two strings. So twice as far as two is four. Okay, so you can see that in order to get the input force, we took the output force and we divided by two. In order to get the input distance, we took the output distance and we multiplied it by two. So maybe you wanna write those down. Input distance, excuse me, let's start with input force is output force divided by the MA and the input distance is the output distance times the MA, okay? Two strings, half as much weight on the input force, but you gotta pull twice as far. Okay, the next one. Now this one's a little tricky, I wanna point this out. You'll notice we count across, there's two. But this string is not supporting this weight. Look, there's really only this one string supporting this weight. There's only one string. This string does not support the weight. Over here we had two, we had this one, and this one. But this string is the only one supporting this weight. So this one that rolls over the top, I like to say the one that rolls over the top like that, doesn't count in the MA. We don't count this one. We just count across the center here. There's only one string. If you look, there's only one string. Mechanical advantage is one. Now previously we said the output force is 50 newtons, and that's the weight of the object. We said earlier if we want to get the input force, we take the output force and we divide it by the MA. There's only one string. All the force of the object is on that one string, so the input force is 50 newtons. Even though this is rolling over the top, we still, if we pull down, we have to pull at 50 newtons. If you were to pull straight up, we'd still be 50 newtons. And the output distance, we said we multiply that times the MA to get the input distance, and it's five meters. There's only one string, so the, when you pull this, you get as much pull out of it, as much distance out of it as you put in. Okay, remember those equations. Think about the concept. Now, let's just go through these last two. We count across, four. We're pulling up, so we count all four. We're not rolling over. If we rolled this one over and then pulled it down this way, we wouldn't count the one we pulled down. Count across, MA4. Now, there are four strings. That weight of 90 newtons is being spread across those four strings. Each one carries an equal force. So like we said, we take 90, we divide it by four, and each string, including the one you pull on, the one you put the spring on, spring scale on, has a force of 22.5 newtons. Now, we want to raise the object. The output distance is how far we want to raise this object. We want to raise it six meters. Well, we really have four strings we have to pull. 
And we said earlier that the input distance is the output distance times the mechanical advantage, so we have to pull 24 meters. Okay, are you seeing the pattern? In one case, you divide to get the input force, and the other case, you multiply to get the input distance. Okay, last one. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Mechanical advantage, five. Okay, we have five strings supporting a weight of 200 newtons. That means each string is supporting 200 divided by five is 40. And we only want to raise it one meter, but we got to pull, in a sense, all five strings. And we said in order to get the input distance, we multiply the output distance times the mechanical advantage. Okay, and that means that this is going to be five. All right, so that's four problems. You should see the pattern. Okay, the input force, remember, is the output force divided by the mechanical advantage. The input distance is the output distance times the mechanical advantage. And you should kind of notice <clears throat> when the mechanical advantage is greater than one, the force, the input force is less than the output force, but the input distance is greater than the output distance. The input force is less than the output force, and the input distance is greater than the output distance. Each of those by a factor of the mechanical advantage. Okay? So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, leave me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video.